Watch out for false prophets. They will come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they will be ferocious wolves. Matthew 7:15. For such people are not serving the Lord our uh, our Lord Christ, but their own appetites. By smooth talk and flattery, they will deceive the minds of naive people. Romans 16:18. I don't want people to know we lost, Mark. That is embarrassing. Figure it out. Trump. The conspiracy to thwart the will of the people is not over. Rep. Benny Thompson. Devil is amongst us. Stay back, boy. This calls for divine intervention. I kick ass for the Lord. <laughs> Welcome to Heresy and Hearsay, a podcast to reclaim faith in the context of political discussion. I'm Reverend Barney, and you can follow me on most social medias at Seth Roth II. Heresy and Hearsay has a Patreon site that you can find at patreon.com slash heresy and hearsay, where you can find our past shows as way as and as a way to help us. Just two dollars a month goes a long way to help make this humble show. And this uh, week's show, uh, my co host the Captain America of the show herself, September. Hi, I'm September, also known as 9 of 12, and you can follow me at 9of12.com. You can find all my podcasts and my other work there, and follow this show, please, on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and my any podcast catcher. Uh, just look for Heresy and Hearsay. Please like, share, follow, subscribe to us. Also, give us a review. That really helps other people find us. You can find our first bo volume of this podcast on YouTube and Patreon. So today we're going to be talking about the clear and present danger of Trump uh, to our democracy. We don't have to guess uh, at it, but we can. All, but uh, but we can also look at his agenda uh, forty-seven, uh, and as well as his, his past, uh, especially events leading up to January sixth. But before we dive in, Brother Bowie, can you lead us in a word of prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Forever and ever. Amen. So last week, uh, it was the uh, Jack Smith uh, filings were um, opened. Uh, I don't know the exact term because my brain's not working today. Uh, it was uh, unsealed. That's the term. There we go. Daniel will eventually find the words. <laughs> um, uh, was unsealed last week, and it's 160 plus pages. I did not read that because I am not a lawyer, and I didn't want to, <laughs> to go through all of that and realize, oh, I don't understand half of this stuff. But I did see a lot of uh, people talking about it, uh, breaking it down, and, and everything else. Uh, and it was just damning information the reason he had to do this filing, for those who don't know, is is that our Supreme Court, which we will we'll get to, uh, decided that presidents have full immunity uh, against any type of prosecution as long as they are uh, performing presidential duties. This was even uh, discussed in the uh, open in the arguments when when they were asked. So you're telling me that if, say, President Biden, who is currently president, sent SEAL Team 6 to go after President Trump, that that would be perfectly legal if it was under some type of presidential reasoning. And they were like, yeah. So that's basically what they're saying is, is that the president of the United States, whoever it may be, has carte blanche to do whatever they need to do to uh, as long as they are president, they are immune from uh prosecution now let's stop there and discuss that for half a second <laughs> <laughs> because that is that is basically creating a dictator a am i wrong on that uh, on that 
No, I mean, it's never been part of our history that any civil servant has been immune to laws. And this sort of changes that. Um, the argument in the Smith paper is, um, and it's being referred to as a loophole, right? That he wasn't acting as president, he was acting as a candidate. However, it has a lot of ground to stand on because of the Hatch Act, which prohibits civil service. And this is how they're trying to go ahead and make him not immune to trial and to prosecution. Um, no civil servant can like express uh, preference for a political party. And it's another way, like the office of president is you're a civil servant at that point. So he was acting as a candidate, not as president. Like he wasn't going out there and saying, okay, everybody calm down. You know, <laughs> we know he wasn't right. despite the bullshit. Um, and, and specific actions he took, a lot of these we knew. Um, a handful we didn't have actual testimony about that has been submitted in this paper. Um, but, like, even if you're at the Board of Elections and working, you're not allowed to be a proponent of a particular candidate or party. Mm -hmm. So expressing support and opposition for a political party, that's that's the stick, sticky point here is that hopefully can be pushed through is he was doing that. He was not right. acting as president when he did these things. And, and I, the timeline of certain events that, that, you know, like where he talked, where he sent out a tweet and then like a minute later they were rushing Pence off to, you know, a secure location and everything else. Like, you know, how those timelines of events how it played out was extremely interesting. Uh, we kind of knew some of it, <laughs> pardon me, but uh, uh, but when you see it kind of laid out like this, that his basically he's laying out his entire case, and we're seeing what his entire case is. Yeah, that it it, it is very fascinating to see how this is laid out and how all of this is is set up. To where it does show that at this particular moment, you know, he was being president and at this particular moment he was being candidate Trump and, and the differences between the two and how even his own staff was very doing very bright line stuff, you know, how they would post on the candidate uh, uh, Twitter or website versus how they would do on the POTUS website or the POTUS Twitter. Well, and he wasn't like even at Mar-a-Lago doing this. He was sitting right. in the Oval Office using the phone in there <clears throat> and you know, his phone but whatever. Sitting in the Oval Office watching tw Twitter, watching television and giving orders. Right. To do things and... like, you know, appoint fake electors and <laughs> mm -hmm. everybody come to the Capitol. And, and I mean, uh, I I tried to watch our, our our I was because we did go live that day, uh, and, and I was going and I was going to watch it and see what our reactions were. And it's like my reactions were great. I couldn't hear a thing from September. And I'm like, oh, sucks, because I know that she had you know at the time such wonderful you know, and, and I think we both broke down at some point. Just yeah. Uh, yeah, in tears and rage and everything else because it was just because we were watching it in real time. It was uh, you know I wish that that audio still survived because that especially of you because that that was you know I don't want to say it was our best work but I think it was important for us to be on there in that time and give our perspectives and everything at that moment when it was happening. But I've been but it's been. <clears throat> this has been bubbling back up there's been a lot of discussion of jan six again and and so i went back and watched like colbert talk about it and and i watched uh you know um seth myers and other people talking about jan six when it, you know within the week of it happening or the day that it happened and just the outrage and, and anger and the fact that he is now able to Run, still run for office this you know and, and be that clear and present threat that the republicans in the senate after you know is like oh he won't run again well here we are now and he is very close and there are a lot of there are a lot of individuals in the senate that don't want him to win 
you know, there are some that will that will be loyal to party first, but it's just, you know, if they had just impeached him, then he wouldn't have ever been able to run again, and then this would have all been over with. I doubt, <clears throat> I'll be honest with you, if they had impeached him, I doubt very seriously that some of these other charges would have come up. The, the local charges, the New York charges would have happened, but I honestly don't think some of the federal charges, except for maybe the Mar-a-Lago, the Mar-a-Lago um, uh, uh, documents, but as far as the other stuff, I think I don't think they would have come up because of the fact that you know he would have been punished, quote unquote, for it, and I don't think Merrick Garland would have done anything for those specific cases. I think it would have only been for I, the, the documents. I feel like there's a couple things. I, th- I feel like going forward, uh, one of the most important reasons to not elect uh, 45 again is to try and get some uh, balance back to the Supreme Court. Mm-hmm. I think this whole ruling that of presidential immunity needs to be overturned. Um, and I think we need to look at the articles of impeachment and include removal from office so that it is effective. He was impeached twice. Yeah. And then <clears throat> you could stay in office and run again. Um, right. And fine, if that had happened to Clinton, fine. Um, even though this is a little weirder. But I think we've taken the teeth out of it since yeah. it's been happening. Well, right. Because we have people now hmm. who, since Nixon, I mean, at least Nixon had the good grace to freaking um, resign. Right. Well, but Trump would never resign. He can't even admit when he loses. And right. we have a, a public who isn't willing to, you know, be upset about this kind of thing. Which is absurd. Uh, thank you, Roger Ailes, for your long yeah. game. Uh, he started Fox News for reasons like that. Um, the, you know, t- <laughs> he, he saw all the media is left, which it's not. <laughs> and now it's more not. But it was right. like, oh, my God, you can't. We can't ever let the media do to Republicans what they did to Nixon and started Fox News. And look how well they're succeeding. Yeah. What? Well, on a side note, on that, while uh, Kamala Harris was was giving uh, was at sixty minutes doing her thing, Trump was doing a town hall or whatever with Laura Ingram, and Laura Ingram actually fact checked him twice. And I'm going, when you're lying so bad that even your uh, the, the Fox News is fact checking you. That's yeah, pretty. That, like, like I was, I was talking to Rob uh, before we started, and it, like the, it's so bad. And to watch people defend him is is mind blowing. Um, but the he was Rob said, all right, so stupid or evil? Like which is it? And I was like, you know, I gave W <laughs> the benefit of the doubt back then. But not so much Cheney, right? Like, because right. he had the the intent. It, it was money, you know. It was money with him right. more than anything. And and I believe W was manipulated because W's really turned out. I, I I marched. I went to D.C. and marched against those wars. Um, and I believe he was, you know, manipulated. Like we went to the war in the wrong freaking country. But anyway. That's long ago, but it's so bad now that I said it's definitely evil because even Cheney is speaking against it. Like yeah. if Cheney's saying, "Okay, that's too far," yeah. yeah, that's a bridge too far for Dick Cheney. I'm going. Why am I on the same side as Dick Cheney? Oh my god, I don't know how I feel about this. No, you know, the lies, lies, lies. Oh gosh, so many. So many, but the successful undermining of media, which is independent, which is not the government. People scream about freedom of speech, and it's that same misunderstanding that, um, you know, you can (laughs) yell fire at a crowded theater or whatever that people seem to think these days. um, That it's no, the government can't throw you in jail for shit you say, but the media isn't the government either. They're not feeding you bullshit 
Um, right. Unless, you know, because there's so many of them, they can fact check each other. Um, and it's just being undermined. Uh, it's, it's for so long that people, you know, this is the only real news. And, and good God. Right between and I mentioned on our last on our last show about how Alex Jones was having all his shit sold, and I was like, great because that guy caused so much pain and heartache to so many parents of of the Sandy Hook mm-hmm. that he should that he should be an indentured servant to them for the rest of their lives, you know, because of all the bullshit that he did. So <coughs> yeah, and, and, and it's this and it's I hate the word misinformation. There. There's disinformation, misinformation, but let's just be clear. It's lies, and, and I and it's George Carlin did a bit about PTSD and how it was first known as, you know, uh, uh, shell shock. You know, two words, very simple. You know, you've been bombed, you're shocked about it. You know, kind of stuff, and how we soften the language of these horrific things. We're softening the language with this word misinformation. Call it what it is, and, and I and I will give like Lawrence O'Donnell credit, for example, because that's who I I mainly watch on MSNBC. But I'll give him credit. But there's several on there that do it. They've stopped saying misinformation, and they're, they're saying these are just outright lies, you know. And well, that's I uh, partially, and, and uh, a friend of mine, Neil, was posting this the other day, and it was like this is important because even the media isn't doing a great job of delineating between misinformation and disinformation. Right. Like when you're saying something out loud that you know is a lie, it's disinformation. It is purposely to try and thwart the truth. Misinformation is, oh, I was mistaken, you know, uh, not having something correct. Disinformation is the dangerous thing. And that's something, you know, again, in this filing, there are the things that are coming forth that we didn't know um, prove spreading disinformation, which is active. It's not a passive thing. Right. Because uh, and we've we've talked about this endlessly on the show because it's still happening. Uh, But, you know, when J.D. Vance was called out by, you know, by everybody saying, hey, what you're saying about Springfield are lies. And he just continued. Then you call him a liar to his face. Yeah. Because, you know, you don't, you know, it's like this, you know, you're spreading misinformation. No, you're li- you're spreading lies about these people and causing people harm, you know, mm-hmm. and, and it's continuing on. And this, you know, something that I talked about in last uh, on the last show. Scholastic well, but, terrorism. We brought that yeah. up last show, too. Yeah. But I also brought up the fact of all the, the lies that have been going on about the recovery uh for Helena, you know, and, and all of them. And I picked the most outrageous because, you know, I wanted to make a point. But, you know, with Marjorie Taylor Greene saying that, oh, you know, the government, you don't think the government can control where the hurricanes hit and how powerful they are? It's like, no, no, woman, they can't. No, they no, they can't. <laughs> Not gods. Um, like the holy crap. So Jeff Jackson, uh, I was watching his TikTok uh, about you know what is actually going on on the ground there, and I it was oh, if you weren't crying you might be able to laugh, but he was you know here's what's on the ground I'll keep you updated and I know firsthand a, a lot of things. Um, okay, this is gonna be <sighs> one of the people that started this operation I was volunteering with last week, uh, flying planes from this little airport across the street from me into Western North Carolina before the government could get down here and get set up and get organized and get, you know, past the roads they had to fix to get there because they were fell off mountains. Right. Um, even that guy, a couple days in, like, I saw him make a video where he was, said, oh, I heard that, you know, they're, they're confiscating their stuff. And I'm like, oh, cripes, dude, please don't. Wait, not I heard. And oh, there are rumors that people are being uh, held up. And I mean, I hope it's not true. But and shame on the government. Oh, dude, I, I it it really broke my heart because I was there, hands on, sorting, packing, 
getting these planes out. And it was all such heartening work, helping me get over my own survivor's guilt. I live close to where things got bad. Um, and and yeah, this community what? came together. And... Great. You're what, about 30 minutes away up a mountain from Boone, I think, at this point? Uh, or fairly close, or that area? Uh, yeah, um, well, about... 30 miles away, like 25, 30 is Hickory, and they got hit hard. Not like Boone and Asheville, but Boone and Asheville are about 90 minutes, an hour to, you know, 90 minutes, depending what kind of devastation you're measuring by. Right, right. Um, so, you know, we had very little damage here. And and we're not up a mountain. They're up a mountain, which is right. the bizarre, crazy thing. Um one of the bizarre, crazy things. But people gave life to these rumors because of what they want to believe. And uh, yeah. people that were in positions of power uh, irresponsibly did so, like Marjorie Taylor Greene, saying that Democrats can control the weather. And Jeff Jackson was, you know, doing a video about what's actually going on, blah, blah, blah. And toward the end of this video, he was, like, <laughs> mentioning that, and no, unlike, you know, one of my colleagues suggested... We cannot control the weather and create hurricanes. And then there was this really effective super, this long pause where it's like, we can't create, no, the government can't control, uh, can't create hurricanes. I feel like I shouldn't have to say that, but here we are. <laughs> And she kept using the word them, and we all know that she was talking about the same people who created the Jewish space lasers that took, that, that created the wildfires. And I'm just going, God, Jesus <coughs> Lord, save us from I didn't even see until last night what she actually posted, yeah. where she put a map of the hurricanes over her electoral maps. What the crazy <laughs> fact. <laughs> And, the, and, and but here's the thing going back to our topic you know and everything else she is a product of fox news she is a product of breitbart she is a product of trump she was a huge trump supporter one of her biggest claims of fame before she got elected was her chasing down david hogg one of the survivors of of uh, parkland harassing him when he went and spoke at the nation's capital about gun violence and trying to stop it and he and she chased down this child you know because he wasn't he was still a child at that point harassing him about <clears throat> about gun about gun control and everything else so that is her claim to fame and she you know that was what got her started on this whole thing because she was a huge Trump supporter and she got elected even though Trump well, – and, and here's what – here's what and, and I want to circle around to this too. You know, Trump was talking about how Georgia had, you know, had all these problems in Georgia. Marjorie Taylor Greene was elected the same year that Trump lost Georgia. So what you're telling me is, is that her vote was uh, – the vote to get her into office was okay, but the vote that you lost wasn't okay. And there was a lot of Republicans like that. Chip Roy was another one of those that got elected in 2020. And I'm I'm confused, you know, why certain elections worked out well, while, like your local election or your rep election, but the presidential election was therefore fraught. Uh, that, you know, if I was going to steal an election, I would also make sure that I kept Congress, too, and that I didn't elect people like Marjorie Taylor Greene, who is a crazy person. I'm just saying. <laughs> it just makes sense, you know. If we're going to do it, we might as well just go ahead and, you know, keep, uh, keep, uh, you know, keep uh, the representatives and make sure we have 60 in the Senate. If we're going to steal it, steal it, you know. Don't do this. You know, we're not half-ass people. I, I know. <laughs> I know people. Well, and the extra talking. stupid of, like, if, if anybody who knows how elections work looked at that map and saw the little bl blue dots on it, in a swing state, like, he wouldn't wipe out Asheville. No. Asheville is ninety is 98,000 uh, uh, 98, people. 
and it is the bluest of blue in that ma- in that mountain region, and it counteracts so many uh, so many votes because for those who don't know, the mountains are kind of rural. There's not a lot of people in them except for like a city or uh, there's like I said, Asheville, ninety eight thousand. That's not a lot of people even in a city, and that is that is a sapphire blue and a sea of red i'll admit to that however that sapphire blue counteracts a lot of red because a lot of that red is just land so you know it does counteract a lot of that and a lot of the and i heard somebody say i think it was axelrod i'm like no don't don't make this work but he was talking about well you know most of the people in Asheville are affluent and whatever and they'll find a way to vote and stuff like that. It's those rural people that may not be able to find a way to vote. It's like you're not helping with the conspiracy theories at all. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, I was happy to see the State Board of Elections in North Carolina did unanimously vote on a bunch of measures to help people vote in thirteen the thirteen affected most affected counties over here. Um, where you can go to any polling place. They can set up different ones. They can, like, there's a whole list of different measures they can do to help those people vote. But they got other priorities right now. Yeah. Um, uh, well, and, and, <laughs> it's rough. And, and I know we're, yeah, I know we're supposed to be talking about Trump, but we'll get back to that in a second because I, there is one thing I want to say, and, and, and because this has been, I've heard this on the right-wing echo chamber for a while, and it's made me angry. Uh, is is they're talking about how the National Guard isn't doing anything. Bullshit. I have seen more helicopters up there dropping and dropping off stuff and and bringing stuff in and rescuing people that can't get a, can't get out of their little wherever and everything else. We I have we have people we know that are members of the National Guard and how fucking dare you do that say that kind of things about these brave men and women that are risking their lives that are working 18 20 hours a day to try to do the uh, try to save these people and then to say that they're not doing anything how dare you that is oh that just makes me angry that you know that they're you know that uh, that and it's not just them but you know all the military is doing what they can well and And, the the horrible irony of the people saying that stuff are super like supposedly support our troops right like what the actual f what and i i have a dear friend of mine who there's these posts where it's like we shouldn't send any aid to foreign countries until it looks like it didn't happen over there that's a different pool of money Yes. And you don't understand. Oh my God, FEMA's out of money for us, but they can send it there. All right, different things. They're not out yet. If you listen to the words that came out of his mouth, the director of FEMA, like they are going to run out before the end of hurricane season because this is so bad. So call your fucking representatives and tell them to go ahead, back, and do their job and vote to approve more funding. I mean, although, you know, Biden, you can order them back, and I know it's supposed it's seen as extreme, but do it. Um, just do it, because yeah. it's going to be needed. I we think... know it's going to be needed. I mean, we got Milton now, yeah, but Milton, what, the, the have... people are, you know, saying that stuff, and that disrespects not only the work being done by our military, but the work done overseas by our military, that pool of money and what they're doing over there is keeping us safe. That's a, that's security money. That's not disaster relief money. So one, it's not, it's not pie. Um, I know you think it's pie because it's all government money. It's all your tax money, but allocations are a thing. And you, you don't have to let people starve to death and be killed somewhere else because we're all human in order to clean up our mess over here it's right. it's mean <laughs> it's rude and it doesn't it it disrespects our military to say they're not doing work and to disrespect the work they are doing somewhere else like holy shit people like we're humans and and this is this is just money be grateful that you live in the richest country in the world that can help other people and help ourselves and get your reps to go do their job 
and and not I mean, if you need to defund something for it, I can think of stuff. I, the military I, I, has yeah. lots and lots of money. If anything, the mil- our military spending is like outrageous for a lot of shit that's just sitting around. <clears throat> In case we go to war, I mean, how many planes do we really need to bomb somebody to kingdom come? You know, we don't need that many. You know, I mean, come on. I, I, I believe that we should be. Uh, I'm a Bernie Sanders. Well, like North Carolina didn't have any Chinooks. Right. Because why would we need Chinooks? We don't need to carry large amounts of people and supplies. Other states right. had to lend North Carolina Chinooks to take care of this disaster because these storms don't happen here. Well, now they do. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, that, and, and that's the thing is, is, is talking about the dangers is one of the things they want to do is defund NOAA. One of my, you know, one of my and Rachel Maddow's favorite, you know, organization, you know, government organizations. Noah does so much work. I saw uh, on Twitter. I know Twitter is a cesspool of hell and, and bullshit. But I saw on Twitter that someone had posted that they had sent uh, Miss Piggy, one of the planes that Noah has that flies into the hurricanes, flying through uh, uh, Melton while it was a Cat 5. And everything else, and showing not the plane itself, but showing the 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 crew and how rough and everything was because flying that plane in gives them a, they're able to do a whole lot more tracking and and stuff like that, so that we can better track these storms, so we can better figure out where these storms are going, you know, the, that and what they're going to do, stuff like the atmospheric and, drop in the middle right. and temperature changes to determine whether it's going to fall off or it's going to grow. If it's going to, I don't know, freeze people in Florida because these storms are, you know, so strong right now. And we yeah, need to know. I, people need to know. Yeah. And, 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 and you know, and Trump, uh, you know, Trump also wants to get rid of, like, thousands and thousands of career – I hate the word bureaucrat because it sounds bad, but career uh, – career, uh, individuals in the government these specialists these people that know their fucking jobs and everything else he wants to get rid of them and replace them with sycophants with with trump appointees and turn all of it into that kind of stuff and at that point none how many people i and we're seeing we're on this topic anyways how many people remember when a sycophant when when a loyalist for w was put in charge of FEMA and the disaster that happened because of it. How many people remember Brownie? Because I do. I remember that idiot and, mm-hmm. and how bad the response was for Katrina. You know, there's nobody in the Democratic government in, in, in FEMA now that is that level of stupid because they are hired because they know what they're doing. And what Trump wants to do is get rid of all of that and put in people that are loyal to him so that they – so that – And it is – have... absolutely. Like, and it's destroying – the whole destroying democracy. And we have evidence of him doing it in his last term. Like, I like the way that guy looks. Hire him. Put him somewhere. Well, well remember when Barr resigned and they were going to put in that other guy – and the entire Justice Department as a whole says, no, we will leave and you won't be able to get anything done first before you put in this guy who is a loyalist who would then allow Trump to do these things that he wanted to do to stay in power because he could not take the fact that he lost. And it, and there, at this time, unlike now, <clears throat> where if he gets into power, God forbid... It, you know, when if he if he was to somehow win this election by by crookedness because he's not going to win legitimately, um, if, if he gets into power, the reason he's doing it is because he has to, as someone stated, and I forget who it was, but the quote is, he has to cling on to power until he dies to avoid going to jail because at this point he's going to jail. One of these charges is going to stick. And then another one, and it's going to be repetitive. And at this point, he's going to jail for a while. And he is a 79-year-old rich kid who is terrified of going to jail. So, yeah, and let's stick in here. uh, Elon's little fucking appearance with Trump the other day. So he was jumping up and down like a weirdo. I mean, That's because he was high. 
<laughs> I'm sure. Um, but the the thing he said, and I saw this on one of the late shows. I don't know if it was John Oliver or John Stewart. <laughs> Love my Johns. Um, so the speech Elon got up and made, and this is so dangerous, was saying that our First Amendment is freedom of speech. You know, it's important. You know, it's why it's the First Amendment to our democracy and upholding it. Okay. Right. Yeah. But the next thing he said is the Second Amendment is to protect our First Amendment. <clears throat> that is the opposite of the point and the Constitution. Right. That reeks of, I should be able to shoot you if you don't agree with me. And this is the kind of person Trump wants to appoint. This is the kind of person Trump is that believes the government, you know, whoever the might is right. Right. It's the actual opposite. But these people who the, – the Second Amendment extremists – who are also wrapped up in Christian nationalism, a lot of people who don't even realize that's what they're doing, although some really do. I'll get to that in a second. But the, um, the that's horrifying. That's the opposite. That's a dictatorship. That is we will shoot you if you don't say the things we want you to say or if we disagree with you. And that was a rally point. So terrifying. Um, we do have helicopters, some weird reports going coming in of big helicopters with masked individuals with unmarked copters and vans. Um, and there's footage of it trying to land. And, and then you know, if you don't have clearance, they didn't clear these flights with the FAA. Um, all the rumors of people being turned away from helping. That's not true. Just find an organization that, you know, where you can land, coordinate, and then report your fucking flight path so you don't crash into other stuff is going on. That's the truth of it. But there are unmarked copters and vehicles with mass people causing damage to relief sites. And I, I'm, I'm wait, still waiting to see because they're still trying to find them. But there's a group, Christian something or other. Ugh. Uh, yeah, calling themselves, claiming that they're you know they're doing this, and they're just trying to help, and they're being turned away. It's creating disinformation. It's dangerous. It's unconscionable. I don't understand. Like a government can't tell me what to do, but to know that people like that have that kind of equipment and preparation, <laughs> that these unregulated Militias, they're not protecting your freedom. Look at what they're actually doing. Right. And I'm trying to form words and not just sit here and shake with rage whenever people... The whole point of this podcast is, is reclaiming my faith because I got tired of it being used for hate. <laughs> And tired of it being used for the wrong reasons because I believe in my faith. This is why we have David Bowie's prayer at the concert for life. For those who don't know, when that that prayer that we that we've excerpted, that I you know uh, uh, is from the Freddie Mercury uh, uh, tribute concert, the concert for life, where they were raising money for AIDS because he died of AIDS, <clears throat> and he does the Lord's prayer. Which to me, to me signifies that even Christians, because at the time, you know, AIDS was this whole, you know, gay thing for a while and everything else, and, and it wasn't. And even I didn't believe that as a Christian because people shouldn't be suffering and dying, you know, no matter what. Um, but t to kind of link my love of Queen and my love of David Bowie, though I will admit September is a much bigger David Bowie fan than I am. By a lot, but you know, my love of Queen with my faith, I felt was integral to that concert and integral to us because I felt that it was important for us to show that faith is about love and is about respect 
and it is about helping others. That is the whole purpose of Jesus is showing up, is to remind the 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 people the the ruling class that you're supposed to be taking care of these poor people. Why aren't you doing that? There is a there's Bible verses beyond Bible verses talking about how you know God's going to smite you if you don't do this. Oop, you haven't done it. Still, I guess I have to smite you now. Kind of situation. <laughs> you know. So, uh, uh, a poignant thing that was happening to me uh, working on the relief effort was, along with at least one of the organizers, I don't know the opinions of everyone there, but there I do know more now because uh, I, Facebook, uh, and I've had to do some unfriending. Um, yeah. A, a great... It was doing my heart some good. I mean, obviously the effort itself and neighbors taking care of neighbors. But I didn't know a lot of people there. And you know me. I do volunteer work, you know, and I've worked with politics, but also, you know, just other organizations in town uh, that do good work. And there are only a handful of people I know that are friends that were over there. So, and this is a small community. So that also let me know ahead. This is a lot of right wing. This is people I would, I don't associate with. I can't. Like, it would be too. I, right. I can argue with people who will listen and we can agree eventually or, you know, agree to disagree. But then there is a group of people in this town, like there are places I won't go. If, if you've got Trump signage all over the wall you have chosen your either your xenophobia and racism or your um, willful ignorance at this point right. in the game right. to where I could not you know, be around it and support it. So I knew I was surrounded by a lot of – and, you know, there are telltale signs, necklaces, whatever, and shirts and people like who call themselves Christian. And they're here doing what would be good Christian work. Right, doing and busting their butts all day long, um, but I know they. So many of them think differently than me in in politics. They all hate the government, and think it's terrible. Um, at the same time, they want its help, and they say it doesn't give it. And then you know that kind of disconnect. Um, so I was like, okay, I'm not going to have any of those conversations here. Obviously, I'm going to be careful what I wear. The temptation to like show up with a Biden Harris shirt was strong. I did not. Um, <laughs> just to just to find out. So I was like, okay, so there are Christians here that call themselves Christians and are doing good Christian work, and at least there's that. I wish they would vote f or, or see that who they're voting for and supporting is in no way behaving in a Christian manner like they are now, putting it where their mouth is. I want them to be able to connect the kindness and compassion for everyone, regardless of status, instead of having to blame forces you don't understand how anything works. Um, so, yeah, anyway, it, 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 was, it was interesting, but it, it helped open my heart a little to more conversations with folks because obviously they're doing the work. Um, I'm sure some are motivated because the government's not going to do it. They're not coming. We got to take care of ourselves. And hopefully now that there's, you know, they, they're channeling that energy into other projects Maybe they're taking a step back and, and looking at what is being done um, by the powers that be, and some minds will be changed. But I was I was encouraged that, like, okay, I have to keep myself in check. They're not all just bad, right? They're right. not all joining militias and being nationalists and want to, you know, bomb uh, other countries to glass and only help ourselves and we're first. A, a lot of them are, 
But they right. don't understand exactly why, and they still have it in their heart to come to give their time and their money. And and then I did make one friend through this, through a conversation um, that was going sideways on Facebook, but we ended up talking, and, um, <laughs> and she's a witch. Like, <laughs> it was a funny... <laughs> okay, it wasn't all just the right wingers there. I did have some safe space I didn't know was there. <laughs> right. Well, and, and the thing is, and, and this is this, I honestly do believe this. And I think uh, Tim Walls may be that kind of link in some respects. But I, I believe that. Remember when, uh, for those who don't know, Bush had this office of faith outreach or whatever. I think the Democrats need that, too. I honestly do. I think they need to, not just Christian, of course, but that they need to have a, a office where they can reach out to these individuals who may be not all of the individuals that are voting for Trump. Some of them that are hardcore, we've lost them. They are the baskets of deplorables, blah, blah, blah. They are, they are gone because they get to revel in their... Like you said, xenophobia, racism, homophobia, transphobia, all of that kind of stuff. They get to do all of that, and this is a joy to them. They finally are able to come out, quote unquote, of the closet of being, you know, and, and wear their white sheets. They're very happy about this. But there are a lot that are just like, oh, they, they hear what their preachers are saying, or their reverends, or, or their priests saying that this is a good Christian person and we should vote for him because. You know, of this, that, and the other, which he's not at all anywhere close. I have a hard time wrapping my brain about that, around that. Yeah, because, like, I've seen supporters talking about he's the one that, you know, God is with and, and that he's such a godly man. What the? F what? And, 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 right. And, and what is your evidence of that? And my retort to that is, like, he has never asked for forgiveness for any of his sins. That is the hallmark of being a Christian, as being able to humble yourself in front of Jesus Christ. And, and it doesn't have to be public, but sometimes it's good to be public, but it doesn't have to be. But you have to humble yourself. Humble, which he can't do because he can't He's be humble. incapable he of. Right. Humble yourself in front of, you know, on your knees, you know, or where, however you can do it. And say, Lord, I've screwed up. I have committed horrible sins. I need your help to be a better person. Please forgive me and show me the way. That is what you're supposed to. And if you've never done that, if you've never done the sinner's prayer, uh, you know, however it's done, then that's on. Then you're not a Christian. You can't claim Christianity. You know, right? Never, and then claim he, you're infallible. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, even the Pope has to go to confession. That is truth. Even the Pope has to go to confession. If you find a, a person... <coughs> God, I'm sorry, the Vatican is so greedy. Oh, well, they are. They, look, I, I, look, there's... He's kind of... Fall, he's He was doing good, and then he's kind of, like, lost it uh, as he's gotten older. And I'm like, eh, all right, fine. But what I'm just saying, you know, if you find a, a person, especially like a, a, a reverend, a priest or whatever, and they don't also, you know, do prayer for forgiveness, you know, even while they're in this leadership, because you still make mistakes. I make mistakes all the time, you know, and I pray for forgiveness all the time, you know, because that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to come contrite and humble and everything else. And Trump's never done that. So how can you claim I don't, a Christian? but my faith is different, so... Right. Well, your faith is different. I'm talking about Christian. Yeah, I know. <laughs> right. Your faith, I... I no, but Christian. in my faith, like, I, you know, I, I do believe everything comes back to you that you put out, and um, it keeps me in check. I'm not waiting for the hereafter for some kind of reward. Um, I, I am living here and now, and... Mm -hmm doing the best that I can and doing things for other people is its own reward. So and well, he, would, yeah, he wouldn't survive anything threefold. So 
Yeah. <laughs> no. No. Uh, you know how hurricanes look like a spiral? Because my faith isn't specific, right? And people right. might think that because I use threefold law, because it just fits in there. But so it does do it to others, right? Because it's a very personalized version of faith. But the way that hurricanes move in a spiral, many things in nature, uh, shells, uh, lots of things come to a spiral. And I believe my spirituality is very much like that, that there there is a collective uh, consciousness that is a spiral and you are in different places on it at different times and it, it's all related and it grows as you advance uh, in your understanding. Mm-hmm. So, Well, to, to, to quote uh, the Beatles, the, the love you take is the love that you make. Yeah, and, and that's, you know, and, and, and ultimately, I, I, you know, do unto others as you would do unto them or as they would do unto you. It, you know, all religions have some form of that rule you know i know uh when i studied wicca for a while it, you know do uh, you know uh, you know do, do no harm uh was the big thing and, mm-hmm. and everything else uh, you know um it, it's just i i don't i can't think of a religion that doesn't have some form of the golden rule which is you know do unto others as you'd have them as they would do unto you which you know yeah i studied from... philosophy of a religion and it's all in there um most uh, major religions, all, all major religions have some form of uh, treating others as you wish to be treated, leaving things better than you found it, mm-hmm. the, you know, uh, that kind of stuff. Yeah, and, and, and I honestly, I, I just, but getting back to being uh, Trump being just a danger to democracy, all you have to do is look up the run up to January 6th. And see how he wanted to overthrow the will of the people. Eight million more people voted for Joe Robinette Biden Jr. than voted for uh, than voted for Trump. That the state, the swing states voted for Biden, not Trump. Georgia voted for Biden, not Trump. And he wanted to overthrow our will so that he could stay in office for whatever reason because he could not take the 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 thought process that he had lost the uh the the election because he cannot stand being a loser Mm -hmm. and he and every day we need to remind him he's a loser this is this is this is why when kamala mentioned the fact that people were leaving his his rallies, you know, his hardcore. Uh, oh, and hardcore he lost rallies. it. Yep. Yeah, because he can't stand that. He can't stand not being the center of attention, and he can't. And that's why so many. That's why when you see these news cycles and everything else, uh, uh, Harris will do something, and then Trump will say something completely outrageous just to flip the 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 news cycle because it's not focused on him. That is a person that doesn't need to be anywhere near the levers of power and doesn't need to have the nuclear football near him. I know people talked about last time that he would get us in a war, and technically he didn't, but he weakened NATO to the point where Russia thought it, they could take Ukraine. And, and, and Oh, absolutely. And that that. I, I totally and, recommend anyone watch uh, From Russia with Lev. And you can see a lot of evidence of the the actions he took and the shysters he had and the con men running around the world uh, uh, with Giuliani pulling levers and trying to trying to use politics trying to create the the Hunter Biden uh, controversy like is was fabricated by con men who weakened Ukraine in the process and as revenge for the new Ukrainian president not agreeing to say that Hunter was under investigation. Right. Like, holy crap. But, and and we can also take, because uh, Monday of this week, uh, October 7th is the year anniversary since the October 7th attacks. You, the, uh, the, uh, the leader of Hamas stated clearly that when Trump moved the the um, 
embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem and said that Jerusalem was the capital of Israel. That was the catalyst for them starting to plot what happened on January 7th. So while he did not... He teed it up. He teed teed up a lot of it. He teed up what we're having to deal with now. When he talked about getting out of, out of, out of Afghanistan, he wasn't going, you know, he released 5,000 Taliban people first, which I think would be the, the last thing you do if you're going to make that agreement. He went behind the Afghani government and talked to them, uh, Taliban, directly, therefore weakening the, the already weak Afghani government. You know, so again, you know, the, those 13... Oh, but people that, believe he could just call all his dictator buddies and they won't war. Like, it, it, no. It's, no, it's not how this worked or will work. We can't live no, in his the, office. Oh. No, because, because uh, this was this was brought up, I think it was brought up by, by Harris in the debate, but I know, some, I know she has said it somewhere, that basically, I know she said, you know, that these dictators would eat him for lunch. But basically what they do is they flatter him because they know that that is the way to get to him. While people like, uh, you know, uh, the leader of, of uh, the, the prime minister or president of France, and I can't remember his name, uh, Macron. You know, Macron isn't going to kowtow, isn't going to, you know, flavor, uh, give him, you know, a bunch of compliments because he's an idiot. <laughs> yeah, Kamala you know, has time. pointed that out a lot, too. About yeah, how so, the flattering him works so well. Yeah. Do you see he misspoke the other day and like bumbled? Like it looked like he was trying to talk about Iran. He said North Korea. I think so. Yeah, yeah. He was talking about he was talking about how Iran got money, but it was North. Korea. All the people who were talking about Biden uh, having decline, pay more attention to your boy. His decline is so real. These misspeaking are, are not seldom. They are getting worse. Oh my gosh, I saw the other day somebody put him next to uh, Patrick Starr from SpongeBob because he was talking about something like in the movies and you don't know and uh, la 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 la. Like, yeah. He just literally made a weird Patrick Starr noise. Like, little, 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 like, and then acted like he finished the sentence and went to something else. Yike! Yeah, yeah. I, I, I know. I know. We. I, I know. We talk about you know. And, and here's the thing. This is the th- thing that you also have to keep in mind. Let's say let let's go through this horror and, and say he wins the election. He's not. He, uh, you know, Harris is going to win this election hands down. I, I have no doubt in my mind. Just make sure you get out to vote to make sure that happens. Uh, but. Let's say he wins. He's not going to make it through four years. I honestly don't believe he will. And, right. And, and and not just because he's going to die. I honestly think that once J.D. Vance is in the office and everything, he's uh, probably, I would give it six I give it six He's going to push him down the stairs? What? Well, no, no, he would just, uh, you know, i give him six months, and then he would enact the 25th uh, Amendment of the Constitution. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think that's what would happen, and then we'd have J.D. Vance. And I, and, yeah, because we we know he is a traitor and a turncoat, and will do whatever needs to be done for power. He's done it. He's done it to yeah. stand with Trump now. Right. So good God, not right. not that it would we'd be getting anything better. No, we would not, because I think he's I think he's smarter. And I think he would be able to do the, the 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 stuff that Trump claims he wants to do, but I don't think he would be able to do because would hire a bunch of idiots. Like I we thought, Pence that. was going to be bad, right? Yeah. <laughs> With his uh, conversion camps and things, Vance. No. Also, just Lord. No, the, one of the first things he would do is if he had control of Congress, is make sure that abortion was a national ban. That you know, he would also probably ban contraceptives. You know, he would turn this. He Vance would turn this into the hands made tale without question. You know, that's what he wants. I don't know why he's. Well, that's why we also of, need to elect, flip the Senate and Congress, and yeah, yeah. We need to flip the Congress. Because he can't do that himself. No. 
Well, they actually talked about that. He could with uh, what was the act? There was a there's a um, there's an act about trade and commerce that mm. and I'm trying to remember it uh, because this has been a big discussion and then it wasn't and then it's been a big discussion and it wasn't because the news cycle. I'm sorry, this this past election cycle has been 12 election cycles. Because I don't remember <laughs> this kind of news happening in any other election cycle this quick. So I was like, I'm so exhausted. Uh, but uh, one of the... Um, but what, one of the... Uh, you know, it, there's an act that he could technically use to ban it because there are states that have banned it. So he could technically use that because you can't cross state lines to do certain things because of trade or whatever. And I don't remember the exact... This is the Commerce topic. Clause? You're talking about the Commerce Clause? Yeah, the, yeah, the Commerce Clause. That's okay. it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because that's something that they had talked about being able to do. I think it's an Agenda 47. I that would still end up in the, in the courts, though, because that's... Yeah, but look who's running the court right there's now. There's inconsistent case law. Yeah. So, I mean, that's what happened with Chevron. Uh, Chevron was thrown out because of that, uh, because, you know, uh, because our court said, no, we will make the decision, even though you guys are, you know, specialists in this kind of stuff. The EPA, this is the the one. But when they threw out Chevron, Chevron basically said that a lot of laws were interpreted by the departments uh, inside the the inside uh, uh, the the executive branch and what uh the judicial what happened was is that they threw that out saying no the courts will make those decisions on how to interpret the laws even though we have no idea what certain things do and so that the so the commerce law would be affected by that and with the current court how it's set up right now uh you know the, the thing is is that uh, i i don't that, yeah whether the court's set up that way or not, I'm not. I don't think he can affect a federal ban that easily, um, even with the Commerce Clause, because you have to prove it's substantially affecting state to state commerce to make right. it a federal thing, and the numbers aren't there. Despite what they'd say, everybody's not having an abortion. I receive trust women. We are not just going out to have abortions to have abortions. Uh. Yeah, and, and and you know, and we've had this, this discussion about you know the, the late term abortions is less than one percent, and most of those people, it's tragic. It's you know, and, and it's something I had discussed in when you weren't uh, last episode where you couldn't join me, uh, which was unfortunate. But I, I discussed the fact that you know uh, about the law. Uh, I was saving fine. the world. Give me a break. Yeah, you were saving the world <laughs> while I was. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but well, you were I bitching was, about it. It's, it's a good well, balance. Was, <laughs> someone has to do the job. Um, but, uh, you know, basically the law was talking about care versus, you know, and, and basically it breaks down. It's like, how long are we going to keep this child that isn't going to live outside the womb alive? That's what the care is about. It's not <sighs> about, you know, harming a, a healthy child. That's not how that works. Yeah. It's about... Yeah, I'm I'm terrified to go after a contraception. Like you mentioned that again, I can't even. I literally get chills. I'd be dead if contraception had been banned. I would be dead. Because mm -hmm. it's there are women who have a lot of issues and. Um, it like, is actual health care. And it's and it's actual health care. I had an IUD. It wasn't being used for con contraception. It was keeping me from bleeding to death. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I, I and I, I know a whole bunch of women with similar situations. Anyone with PCOS, um, because think about and and think about all the hormone uh, treatments that uh, are keeping women alive, frankly, yeah. and banning that because of a misguided idea about what you think they should be able to do and not do, um, and his particularly. Being, women should just stay home and serve your men, and, and not be and, able to choose when they have children. Right. And, uh, and, for, and and women that are past giving birth should then take care of the women who give birth children, while those women go back into the workforce right after they give birth. 
because that's mm -hmm. that's your whole purpose is to do is to stay uh you know basically uh you know uh, not a wet nurse but, serve. but basically a uh, uh, you know serve to take the care men. of yeah serve the men and and the women go back to work so that the men can have more money for whatever they want to do and i'm uh, yeah so danger all the way around especially for women you know 51% of our population you know, would be, you know, uh, would basically be turned into second class citizens. And the How are women supporting to... this? I'm, I'm, I'm constantly amazed at that. I, I uh, well, I am too. I, I'm, I, ha... but there, there has been some polling lately showing that they are making grounds on those individuals. They're also, what was interesting yesterday, uh, the 8th of, of October is, is that, uh, uh, VP Harris went and did a bunch of interviews. She did uh, Call Me Daddy podcast, which is the second biggest podcast ever. Um, then she also did, uh, she also was on the Howard Stern show. And Howard Stern was like, yeah, I'm going to, you know, support you. I'm going to vote for you and everything else. And Howard Stern has a lot of men between the ages of 20, uh, 25 and, and 48, you know, mm -hmm. as far as his listening. And that's a big deal. As far as that, and Howard Stern is an institution. Uh, as far as that, uh, you know, uh, so that's a big deal that he said that on air and everything else. And then she went on the View and all that. And then Trump was complaining he doesn't do it. She doesn't do enough interviews. She's done four interviews in two days. <laughs> like you know, whatever. And, and the CBS uh, sixty minute interview was the guy was a bit rude. I thought he he, he was interrupting her quite often. But you know, it wasn't softball by any stretch of the imagination. You know, some of the others, you know, like the call me daddy. I haven't listened to that because uh, I you know I don't have that much time in my day. I have Keith Overman to listen to. Uh, but you know, <laughs> I know September. He's my hero. I can't help myself. Um, but, you know, and she was on Colbert, and I haven't seen that yet. So I want to see that interview when she was on Colbert last night. So I, I'm sure it was more fun than anything else. But I'm sure Colbert asked her some some questions that were hard-hitting and everything else. Because Colbert does care and everything else. And he has a huge platform. He's the biggest uh, late-night show, you know, with millions of people watching the YouTube alone, uh, as let alone his actual show so i i th you know the thing is is that we have to keep in mind that trump wants to fundamentally change our government to where it is filled with sycophants and, and loyalists that would do his bidding and the last time something like that happened that was when they burnt down the reichsgott I'm just saying, you know, I would prefer them not to burn down the the Congress, but you know, <laughs> they tried to do that on January 6th. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you know, and 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 what what you know, going back to that for just a second, you know, when we saw those things and like Josh Hawley throwing up his fist and then an hour later running away from the people that he was throwing his fist up because he was afraid of them, yet he still placates to them is it fear at this point is it you know terror because he's afraid that he he put his lot in with them at that point that now he ha he has to go all in or else they may come after him because that's not any way to govern by terror and fear and that's what trump wants to do he wants to mm -hmm. you know all those things he talks about how he how the democrats would go after him his, uh, go after their political op uh, uh, opponents and stuff like that. That's what he wants to do. He everything. It's in his to, plan, right? He he projects. Folks, you can so, go read it. Yeah. Literally in his plan. He pro whenever he's saying that the Democrats are doing something, he's doing it. I honestly think he probably cheated in the election and hired a bunch of people to vote for him. You know, in the 2020 election, that's why he knew there was that's with it was rigged because he was trying to rig it. Oh, and uh, Elon's yeah. offering money. Yes, you yes. can make uh, forty-seven dollars per person you get to vote. That's not illegal. Vote. No, it's not vote. It's to sign up. Uh, it's to sign the uh, fuck. Excuse me. What is uh, I, what is change.org? What 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 are those things that are on change.org, Carl? The petition. 
Yes, it's forty-seven dollars if you get people to sign up for one of the for his that. Why can't I say that word? Holy, okay. Daniel's having a bad day again with words. To refer swing um, state voters to sign a petition. Right, that's it. And basically, what it is 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 you're giving your information to, uh, on that so that then they can micro target you for ads and stuff like that. That's all that's for. Is is that because you have to put like? No, it's name. not what it's for though. Because no. if you if you sign this, then he's got your information for his right. super PAC to swing your vote. Right. And part of, but part of that is micro targeting that individual with ads and stuff to make sure that they vote for Trump. It's but it's also to try to hit you up for more money to go to the super PAC, which is also trying to help Trump win. But yes, he is paying. He is saying if you get, let's say me, let's say I get September and and her husband and her and her children who are of legal age all to sign this petition. Hey, I said it. Um, then at that point. Um, what would happen is I would get $47 for each person. That should be illegal because you're not supposed to do that with those anyways. Yeah, it's because it's really, it's just, it's a slippery, disgusting, tricky thing. Like the the, the law prohibits paying people to vote and or to register or to vote a certain way um, or to not vote. But this is, sign my petition supporting the Constitution and it's supporting it in the way I mentioned earlier, that the First Amendment is the most important and the second is to support it. Gross. Um, but super PACs, then he's got your data and this, and then, like you said, they will, you will be inundate, inundated and tracked right. with how you're going to vote. The, the persuasion is real. Um, and I can understand where he got there, that this would be okay, because this is how the algorithms work and feed you stuff. Right? Right. Oh, well, you believe the same thing I do. I'm going to send you all these things and sell you shit. Right. And, and yeah, well, it, it, it's like, you know, that's why I'm, I I hate the fact that I'll do a Google search about something and then it'll sh- there'll be an ad show up on my Facebook page about it. I'm like, no, that's not what, it, you know, and I'm Google searching on, because I'm using the same Wi-Fi for everything. I'm Google searching on my phone and then I go to Facebook on my computer and it's showing me an ad for something I kind of google search and like no don't do that that's not what i wanted at all i don't know it's fine like i get it, it's convenient sometimes but <laughs> using it in elections to spend money um on influencing republican voters and on opposing uh democrats in particular that's where all this this pack money's going yeah and they're not supposed to coordinate like this but he was on stage basically coordinating you know, with 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 Donald Trump, super PACs aren't supposed to coordinate, but it right, uh, exactly. It's the dark money. Like super PACs exist, PACs exist because we do have limits, and this is where campaign finance reform is my that's my top. What needs to change um, is is our campaign financing laws because candidates can only accept X amount of dollars. Uh, but if you form a political action committee, you can. Take as much as you want and spend it however you want. Right, but they're not supposed to coordinate with the candidate. Right, and uh, but they are. So obviously, uh, like I mean, he's on on fucking stage. (laughs) Yeah, but like it's a really just barely, you know. Just you, you have to look through campaigns finance law in every single state and federal to try and find anything that says you can't do that, and it's not there. Yeah. The, now, the, the I, only judge of whether they're coordinating is, like, if they give them money directly. And they don't. They just buy ads and stuff. I've actually worked doing fi- FEC filing, so it's, ugh. Like, wow, it, it's just dark money. They did a lot of reform to try and stop, you know, shadow funding uh, and completely failed. Now, I also... <laughs> Because we were talking about that that uh, rally in Butler, I do want to I want I want to mention this because it, it it makes me mad to the point where it makes my nose uh, uh, itchy, and that's when I'm most most irritated. Um, it, if my nose starts itching, that's when I'm the most irritated. But mm. Trump and and his sycophants talking about how God protected him and Butler and didn't get shot, and it's like, 
okay, so God protected you by having you turn your head, but that firefighter, God just said, fuck him. No, that's not how any of that works. You got lucky, and unfortunately, one man died and two people were were wounded to the point where their lives will be forever altered. You know, and to claim that God was protecting you, and, and, but not protecting those people is gross. All right. I, I hate it more than I, it just drives me nuts to hear that, that especially out of his purple liver yeah. lips. Yeah. It just makes me angry yeah. to hear that. And I'm, I hate this distraction of people not understanding how our system works. Mm-hmm. And instead, it's a pack fight. I literally just got a text from a left-wing pack um, started by Sharon Brown and Don Tester. John Tester, sorry. And it's, they exist. <laughs> they form themselves. And they're saying it in this, this text they sent me. They formed it to fight against Bobert's pack. What's Bobert's pack doing? I'm scared. Oh, what do you think? National abortion ban, you know, pushing that kind of stuff. Uh, Yeah. So, Uh, yeah, they're, you know, uh, we'll match your donation to help us say goodbye to her for good. Like, they're fighting against her campaign. This isn't helping our system work. I love our democracy, and and there's a lot in place to go take power. We still have it, but people don't understand that, and they're just letting uh, money right make everything worse and misusing faith, like you say, to influence that. Jesus would be flipping tables. <laughs> yes, yes, he would. And, and, and so that's what I'm doing, uh, sort of. Uh, you know, not uh, figuratively. I'm flipping tables because, yeah, uh, you know, they talked about all the money that that Kamala has has earned. You know, since she you know was named the 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 uh, nominee and everything, and it's great and all, and she's going to be able to outspin. But I miss the days where remember. I, so, uh, some of our listeners may be too young to remember this, but back in the day, there was a young candidate that went on MTV and stood in front of a bunch of people and did a town hall and just talked to people. Why can't we? I, I missed the, you know, where he answered questions. Of course, one of them was boxers or briefs, but, you know, that's what you <laughs> mean. But still, you know. Yeah, gotta keep on, people engaged, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's like, but. I'm not saying that, you know, I'm glad about all these rallies and stuff, but I really, I wish that, that VP Harris would do more of the, what she did with Oprah, where she had people asking her questions and everything else. And not just her. I want Trump to do this as well. He would fail miserably at it, but I want substance. I want to hear, you know, and there's a lot of substance out there. Don't get me wrong. There's, an 88 page uh, economy report that she put out right before the VP debate and everything mm-hmm. else. Mm-hmm. And, and one of the reasons why I like the VP debate is because there was issues discussed. There were things that were, you know, it wasn't, you know, what people what were was, complaining about it being so civil. And like, I'm glad it was civil. Like, yeah. What the hell? That's what it's supposed to be. If when you're, when you, get your children to like enroll in debate club in high school. Isn't that what you want to see them behave like instead of screaming at each other, instead of it just being more den of thieves bullshit. Yeah. And and I know for Harris that she needed to make sure that Trump showed who he truly was. And I get that as far as their debate was concerned, but there was still substance in her, at least in her answers. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, you know, there weren't any in his, and I'm just surprised that we didn't hear about Hannibal Lecter and the Electric Shark or whatever, you know. But you know, on the same thing. Uh, well, you know, no, it was it was the Haitians. Yeah, it was pets. definitely the it was definitely the Haitians at that point, and it was just uh, 
that set off a firestorm. And, and the thing is, is that you know, I'm glad that the VP debate was at least substantive. There was, you know, I know Vance didn't answer hardly any questions. You know, he he did his talking points, but on the same thing, I I felt that you know, on Wall's side, he did very well on that. And when he nailed, and when he did the gotcha, as far as uh, the you know, did Trump lose the election? That was still a substantive question to be asked because it it's an important question, and the fact that Vance then said. Uh, you know, uh, I'm looking. F I'm. I'm looking. Uh, you know, I'm not looking to the past. I'm looking to the future. And Wall said, "Well, that's a damning non-answer." It was, a and I called that out when I talked about the VP debate. But do you think it changes any votes? It does. No, the VP debate would rarely change votes. Oh, I don't know. I think this one was different, and absolutely would, because of who Tim Walls is. Right. Well, he got a. While Vance moved up slightly as far as his likability, he's still underwater. Yeah. Walls got another plus 13 on likability because he wasn't an asshole, because he wasn't mean, because he, you know, and he, even though he fumbled the answer about Tinderman and Square, he still, you know, he did eventually, he's like, no, I, I messed up. I made a mistake. You know, I wasn't there at that particular moment, but he was there during the summer where all those other... I was hoping it would be more influential the way that like if you go to his tiktok and see stuff he was doing you know like his fixing your car stuff oh i love that one. and his speeches he's so great live and he's so great one-on-one -on -one with people and he's so like that likable <laughs> the dad gen x wants because we lost ours to fox um right yeah uh but i i don't think that came through in that debate not that we're talking about the debate, but I wasn't here for your discussion about that. Um, I wish more of that had shown up. Like, it wasn't the best format for him. Um, no. And it was for JD I... because JD is slick. Yes. Slick as hell. But anybody who thought, uh, okay, okay, well, he's actually smart and likable. Yeah, but then you need to look carefully at his actual policies. So. Yeah. And intense. Yeah. Um... But because, you know, he will, you know, like I, like we said earlier in this is like there's a good chance that if they do win, which they won't. But if they do win that within six, I believe within six months, J.D. will invoke the 25th Amendment of the Constitution. And, and because Trump is mentally declining, you see, even if you look at 2023 versus today, yeah. just how bad it is. And it's getting worse daily, uh, honestly, at this point where he can barely you know, string two sentences together without it sounding like, you know... But does it for hours? It's insane. Yeah. Yeah, his speeches have also gotten longer, and I'm like, well, that's probably why people are leaving, because 2016, they were about an hour, and now they're about an hour and a half, and it's like, mm, that's that's too much talking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's especially about rambling on about, you know, grievances. Uh, and that's, you know, all it is. And he would take, and going into the Oval Office, he would take those grievances and then unleash, you know, and try to get back at the people that tried to get, uh, tried to yeah. hold him accountable. And having power is dangerous, and he's literally said things that uh, tend to want to dismantle our existing democracy. But we have talked much longer than we normally do, so mm -hmm. we probably should wrap this up. So <laughs> we, as you can tell, we believe we we're strongly believing that that Donald Trump is a, is a true danger to our democracy. Um, so uh, you know, get out there and vote, please vote. So with that, let's move on to carrot and stick. All right, so uh, September, soon we already kind of touched on this. Would you go ahead and, and handle our carrot uh, today? Sure, carrot to Jeff Jackson. Uh, he's my rep, actually, but, or has been recently rep for the 14th, but now he's running for Attorney General of North Carolina, which for which he is eminently qualified. 
uh, put out these videos talking about the disinformation going around and trying to educate people in North Carolina about really what's going on. He's also a major in uh, the National Guard, so got to meet with National Guard folks uh, in his current capacity as a representative and as a member of the National Guard. Met with, uh, was it Harris or Biden, but whatever. He's a great guy. Please vote for him for Attorney General. And I believe one day he will be a governor of, the, of North Carolina. Yeah, he's not speaking to me right now. But... Why is that? What if, What did you do to Jeff Jackson, this wonderful man? Okay, and well, first I helped him get his position because the first time he was appointed, and uh, that's how I know him. Um, I was not on the committee in the, that district at that time, but I knew people on the committee and they wrote a letter of support to ask them to appoint him in there. Uh, after meeting him, uh, he came to a gay bar and was talking to like LGBTQ community and he's, and so I thought this guy's great. And, um, so I've known him ever since, but I had a problem with, uh, one of my sons a couple years ago and uh, the law not being enforced in North Carolina, being able to self commit for mental health reasons. Instead, right. they force, uh, they call a magistrate, and all of a sudden you're being stripped of everything and they're uh, involuntarily committing you just because the hospitals don't want to do the legal voluntary way. Right. Um, and I got caught up in that, even though I was super careful about it being voluntary for reasons. And um, I got Jeff to back me up and make some calls, but then... He kind of just dropped it and didn't follow through, and I ended up having to get a hotel room to stay near a hospital when they were forcibly committing him in the middle of the night and having to get the magistrate to undo the stuff the next day. Um, so uh, Jeff put out a thing about fighting for you know laws being enforced or something in North Carolina very soon after that, and so I wrote back to him and saying he was being very disingenuous, <laughs> and he got pretty pissed and wrote me a nasty email. Um, and, uh, his, his staff eventually followed up, like, what did you think of our services? And I told them what happened and dealt with them. Um, so he at least still, even in that, you know, he, we're not communicating very well, like the way we used to, but he did have his staff following up. He did take and answer my calls to begin with, which is a lot more than most people do. And frankly, I know, and this is the way politics works. You get up there, you get in there. There's only so much you can do. And getting something uh, like all the hospitals in North Carolina to respect this law is a lot to ask um, and a lot for him to take to the legislature when they're busy trying to like, oh, I don't know, <laughs> keep women from being actually chained up uh, is, is yeah, yeah. the direction it's been going. So anyway, yeah. sorry, Jeff. I was in a place. I hope you can understand. Yeah. Uh, still love and support you for Attorney General, and yeah, I hope Governor at some point. Yeah, I, I honestly think he, he's he's a he's a bright star, and and uh, he and has been. Yeah, he goes door to door for his to talk to his constituents. Like, yeah, ever since he got elected, he still does it, and uh, so and we the, don't. And the, and the only reason he's not running for the 14th again is, and running for AG instead is because of the fact of what the gerrymandering that they did um, and everything else basically made it to where he could not win the 14th. It was turned, I think it's back to, it, it's a red district again, so yeah, you know, whatever. So AG and North Carolina typically likes because Roy Cooper was our AG and and right now our current AG uh, Josh Stein um, is running for governor. Uh, North Carolina tends to like to have Democratic AGs uh, at least in the most recent history, the last decade and a half or so. So th even if we have Republican governors or whatever, so I think he's got a really good shot at being an AG. So you know, just vote for him. Make sure you vote for. Uh, Jeff Jackson, he is a v v most qualified for this. So, all right, so let's get to the stick. Don't you blaspheme in here. Don't you blaspheme in here. Now, the first part, this is a two part. The first part is like, hey, hey, God, uh, um, could you stop beating up the United States with hurricanes? Uh, we'd appreciate it because, you know, we're, we're still trying to clean up for Helene. That's going to take, you know, years, if not decades, to, to fully fix. And now, and now you want to hit us with a Cat Five hurricane? Uh, we'd appreciate if you didn't <laughs> hurt us, hurt us anymore. Stop hurting us, Daddy. Giving <laughs> God uh, the stick is such a 
old man shouting at the clouds thing. You literally are the old man shouting at the clouds right now. Yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah, God, yeah. <laughs> but really, the the stick is really about uh, Ron DeSantis and and him um, not wanting to speak with VP Harris about the recovery and everything else because he's still a bit bitter about the fact that he doesn't get to run against her and everything else. And he's bitter that a woman is running and he doesn't get to run and you know, whatever. So, you know, while she's trying to help coordinate with, you know, the different States and everything else, he's refusing to take her calls. And it's like, Ron, stop it. All right, look, your state is about to get blasted by another hurricane. That's going to wipe out half it. You know, it's going to wipe out the central part of Florida if it stays a cat five i looked just recently and it's not looking good that it's not going to go down to a cat three which is what they were originally predicting you know that's a big storm that's going to hurt you a lot so maybe you should take all the help you can get and listen to everybody i'm just saying you know whatever anyways so the call to action today Okay, so I'm going to say send letters. We're getting close. I assume you all checked your registrations already and uh, verified they're valid or went ahead and registered. Voting starts very soon. Um, get a ride or give a ride. But you can still send letters. And I was reminded of this because my son, who moved to Pennsylvania, who I'm still trying to nag to get an absentee, um, got a letter in the mail. Uh, the one place you can do it, and I learned about it during the nerd event that happened is voteforward.org and it's go to votefwd.org uh you do need a printer to do it this way but it's something you can do from home uh just click on it you'll get a list of people that you'll get a it's a it's a form letter but you're hand addressing the envelope you're writing the person's name on it and there is a section that's kind of not printed out with the rest of the ask uh, where you can put your personal, here's why it's important to me to vote, uh, which can be influential. Of course, fully handwritten letters are, I, you could take the list and do that too, but this just makes it even easier. Um, and then you, when you, after you send it, you check and say, I sent it so that they can track that information and knew his, who has been reached out to this way. Um, that's, more useful than you realize. So please, if you're going to commit to write some letters, write these letters, get them out, but go back to the site and let them know you did. That helps us know in the future, uh, political activists, the effectiveness of letters. We already have data from the past. Like we know how effective door knocking is. That's the most. And mailers are a little bit more. Um, but we don't have things like the mailers that have been going out with friendship bracelets this year, I'm curious to see if that bumped up the effectiveness of print media. Uh, phone calls actually are right behind uh, door knocking because it's face-to-face. -face. But these letters can be helpful. Right. They are targeted to like supporters. You're not going to hear back. You don't even have to put your return address. A lot of people are afraid to do things you know, for their own safety, whether it's you know, COVID exposure or... Or it's you know your your face being exposed. Send a letter. It's it, it's quick and easy. Votefwd.org, and we appreciate your help in swinging the selection. Right. Oh, and of uh, course, always yeah, check with your yeah. local party, your local Democratic Party, hopefully, <laughs> to volunteer. Yes. Right, and and again, make sure you know. Uh, Early voting started in some places. The last day to register to vote is coming up soon for North Carolina, so make sure you double check, triple check your registration so that you can vote and everything else. Um, I've gotten my mail in ballot. I just need to find two people to sign it so that I can send it on uh, and get that mailed out. Uh, but I do have it. It's a safe place right now. So, and I've already got copy. And if you're doing mail-in ballots and everything, make sure you get a photocopy of whatever ID you're going to use. You can use the state photo ID or you can use your passport. That is one that's accepted in the state of North Carolina. So you can definitely do that as well. So with that being said, I want to thank you for joining. I thank you. Sorry. I thank you for joining us at Heresy and Hearsay. I'm Reverend Barney, and you can follow me on most of the socials. That's the Roth I.I. You can also follow, find the show on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and any podcast catcher. Just Google us. 
And again, I'm September. You can follow me by going to 9of12.com and find all of my content and check out our Patreon page for this show at patreon.com slash heresy and hearsay. $2 a month really helps keep us going. Thank you for listening today and bless your hearts. Prime and Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> <laughs> I want to raid. Uh, huh? This was a good one. It was a long one, but it was a good one. Yeah. Next week we'll be discussing women's health in more detail. So you know, and about the laws that have been passed. Because you heard about uh, Georgia reinstating the five-week, uh, uh, the six-week ban. Yep. Yep.